Hello, good day everyone. What we're going to do is we're going to solve simultaneous equations with the method of substitution. Before we start, a couple of assumptions. The first assumption is that you know how to perform algebraic operations such as addition, subtraction, and multiplication. You know how to identify the coefficients of a term. You know how to make an algebraic coefficient, the subject of the formula. So this here is what a pair of simultaneous equations would look like, or linear equations. And the A, B, C, D, E, and F just simply represent real numbers. All right. So first off, you're gonna get the process for it. And the first process is that the first step in the process is that you must choose an equation and write one unknown variable in terms of the other unknown variable. And the best equation to choose is the equation with the smallest coefficient with the unknown. So you substitute this new equation into the equ other equation that you didn't use. Then you solve the resulting equation and determine the unknown value. From that, you take that result and you solve for the other unknown value using the same equation number 3 that you just created. Sorry, the same equation that you created from step 1. Then you state your conclusion and you're finished. So here's a couple of examples since this may seem a little bit confusing. First example, we have 3x plus 2y equal to 12, 3x plus y equal to 9, and we get make y the subject of the formula in equation number 2. We get something that looks like this. From there, all we have to do is just simply substitute equation number 3 into equation number 2. Now, notice we take equation number 2 and we create equation number 3. And therefore, we take equation number 3 and we substitute it into equation number 1 here instead. When we substitute equation number 3 into equation number 1, what we will end up with is something looking like this. What we did is we replaced the y value, which, it is, which has an equivalence of 9 minus 3x inside of this equation here, wherever we saw y. And then from there, we expand and simplify, and we'll get a value of x being equal to 2. We use x equal to 2 in equation number 3, and we'll be able to solve our value of y, which is equal to 3. We state our conclusion, and we're finished with the solution. On our next example, we'll be looking at 4x minus y equal to negative 8, and then x minus y equal to negative 5. I can use my negative y and make y the subject of the formula here or here. But I prefer to use positive numbers to work with, so and because of my personal preference, I would choose a value of x to work with. So I'm choosing x to make subject of the formula for equation number 2, and I'll get that x is equal to negative 5 plus, negative 5 plus y. And notice again, I use equation number 2 to develop this equation number 3, so therefore equation number 3 can be, de can be substituted into equation number 1. So I substitute equation number 3 into equation number 1, and then from there I get this value, I expand and I simplify, I notice that y is equal to 4, and then from there I use y equal to 4 in equation number 3, and I get my x value being equal to negative 1. I state my conclusion and I am finished. Now the reason I choose a personal preference of having to use a coefficient of 1 in front of the x, you would understand why in the next example. So say for example I have something that looks like this. Notice that there is no coefficient of 1 in any of these two equations. All of the equations have a value greater than 1. I, however, due to my personal preference, would choose this value here and use x as the subject of the formula in this equation 1 because I don't want to work with a negative coefficient. And since this one here is a positive coefficient that is small, I would use this one here to make x the subject of the formula in. And I would end up with something looking like that. Notice that I use that equation and I am able to get something that looks like a fraction. Fractions tend to make things a little bit difficult, but in our case, we are lucky enough that when we make the substitution of equation number 3 into equation number 2, we would see that this here simply cancels off with this value here to leave a remainder of 2. And then from there, I simply expand and I simplify and I get my value of y being equal to 1. Now, this value here, in case my 2 did not cancel easily with the value that I have on top there, what I can do is I can multiply this entire equation here by a value of 2. And if I did that, what I would end up with is something looking like this. I would end up with 4 into 7 minus 3y because my 2 on the underneath would cancel with the 2 I multiply by. And then this minus 2y here would also be multiplied by a value of 2. And then this 6 here would also be multiplied by a value of 2. Now, if it is that is the case and you expand and simplify, you would notice that you would get the same y value at the end of it. When you expand and simplify this, you will get 16 over negative 16, and that will be equal to a positive 1. 
So once you get your value of y equal to 1, you just simply use y equal 1 in equation number 3 and you solve your value of x, you state your conclusion and you're finished. So if you have any questions or comments for me, you could message me at carb.tutor at gmail.com or you can leave your message with the video or you can ask your course teacher for any problems that, to help you with any problems that you may have. Thank you very much.